the effort to manage a climate change has been a matter of the highest level of climate change is a global challenge and requires global solution now the challenges are in many ways but let us first talk about the cost factor we are not interested in paying and maintaining our lifestyle what more can we do to manage the climate change Good morning and welcome to the session 4 of disaster management and we are going to talk about the climate change challenges. In the previous session we were talking about the climate change adaptation and the various policies. In this we are going to talk about what are the challenges that are closely associated with this climate change. Now moving forward we need to understand that until date, up to date I am talking about, the effort to manage a climate change has been a matter of the highest level of diplomatic negotiations that have been going across the world. Which means to say that probably every single head of the country, be the president or the prime minister or the king, have been trying to negotiate and talk about the climate change factor and how do we need to adapt ourselves so that they can help their nations to survive in the coming years. So that is why the states and international organizations on a very, very deliberate outward manner, but largely excluded the fringe of NGOs, business group and the minor political actors altogether. Nowadays, what is happening is that even the companies are trying to involve themselves with the government. What we are trying to talk about is the public-private partnership coming into picture where they are trying to get inside, they are trying to understand how they can be useful for climate change factor. Why is this climate change becoming so important for government and for organizations is that they want to see an adaptive and innovative manner through which they can survive the entire scenario and start moving forward so that they have a better lifestyle, they have a betterment for the people and also make a secured living for the generations to come. Now, moving forward, we are going to talk about the climate change challenge in the following manner. Climate change is a global challenge and requires global solution. Now, first itself, let me just tell you, it is not a problem of one country. It is not a problem of one hemisphere altogether. It is a problem of all the 200 odd countries in this world. So everywhere, every single corner of the world, we are talking about this climate change challenges followed by the greenhouse gas emissions have the same impact on the atmosphere, whether they originate in Washington, London or Beijing. So we are not just going to talk about those powerful countries, those advanced countries or those countries which are emerging as the powerhouses. But we are going to talk about the effect of this across every single hemisphere as far as possible. So consequently, the action by one country country to reduce emission will do a little slowdown on the global warming unless other countries act as well. So ultimately an effective strategy will require commitments. Now this word is very very important will require commitments and action by major emitting countries. So this is going to be a real big challenge that is coming into picture. We are going to take it serious. We are going to look into it and we want the system to get into a picture where we are able to control the climatic changes, where we are able to control the system. We are able to go back and tell the people, yes, we have been able to build a better system altogether. Now, moving forward, what are the challenges ahead of us? Now, the challenges are in many ways, but let us first talk about the cost factor. When the business and politicians talk about climate change, the first thing they mention is the word cost. Why? Because for any company or for any nation, the biggest problem is money. 
moment people say that you need to change the way of living, you need to bring in a better adaptation policy or you need to reframe the way how the lifestyle of people is there, we are going to talk about cost. Now, if you start up from a status quo to adding today about CO2, removing an equipment to a coal power plant is very, very expensive but not only if they do not value the environment. That's where the problem starts coming in. Now, if you look into coal extraction or if you look into any of the factor where carbon emissions are very high and you go and advise them telling that, sir, we do not want to follow this process. We want you to follow an alternative method. What is coming into picture or an hindrance is that they talk about money and they say that, this is an easier method and if you start going in for alternative methods that is costly so we don't want to go in for that when you buy coal for a power plant you pay for a limited resource and the cost of supplying it to you so what you are trying to do is that you are trying to stick back to the olden methods itself you don't want to change you don't want to adapt to the new policies you just believe that what we have been doing on this earth what we have been following on this universe is much more easier is much more entertaining for us and that's the way how the lifestyle has been going on so we don't want to change and we don't want to adapt ourselves to the new policies that are emerging in our scenario we are still believing that change comes with a lot of cost and we don't want to adapt to change unless and until there is going to be something really beneficial for us so whenever you are going to talk about this climatic changes at any part of the hemisphere the first question that is definitely going to come is the cost the return on the investment factor that is why probably when you talk about this kind of factors in india china or in countries like smaller islands all together everybody is interested to listen but then again they ask this question who is going to support us from a financial angle so that we will be able to develop to the new policies or the new measures altogether now moving forward now, we are also going to talk about this factor called as collective action problem. What is a collective action problem? Collective action problem arises when all of the members of a large group enjoy a resource equally. Let's say clean air here. But protecting that resource must be paid by each group member. Now, when such situations arise, especially when the cost of the protection is high, each member really wants his or her neighbors to pay to avoid paying himself or herself. Quite a natural phenomena that exists among the human beings. We are not interested in paying and maintaining our lifestyle. We want others to do it for us. We want the government to take care of us. We want the government to pay for a better lifestyle, for a better condition of living altogether. We are not just happy about the factor that we can do things by ourselves. We want the government to come back, tell us that this is what we are doing. This is how we need to grow. This is how we need to take it forward. So what is happening in our scenario? What is going forward in our thought process is that every time people come and ask this question 100 times, who is going to pay for the quality of life? Now, if in India, the quality of life is deteriorating, now who is going to bear the cost of it? Now, if you want the transformation to happen in our country, if you want a cleaner, greener, pollution-free environment in India, who is going to pay for it? Who is going to maintain those trees? Who is going to maintain those clean roads or sanitation factor altogether? The same thing happens in a collective action. When a resource is being enjoyed by all members of the nation, not all the members are interested in paying back. Not all the members want an equal share out of it in terms of doing it. They just want to take care of the resource. They want to utilize it, but they don't want to pay back. So there is a collective action problem. All of them enjoying the resource, but all of them don't want to pay for it. Moving forward. What more can we do to manage the climate change? Now, that's a very, very important question for us. The only thing that we need to do here is that we want to reduce the atmospheric carbon. Now, that's the first and the final word which I would like to talk about in terms of reducing the carbon footprint, in terms of making the climate change effective altogether. 
The pyrolysis of biomass or heating it to a temperature at the range given 450 to 750 degrees in the absence of oxygen produces a pure form of carbon known as biochar. Now, that is what we are looking into. From a global climate change point of view, biochar production has a greater potential as it eliminates all of the black carbon and the long-term greenhouse gas effect from biomass burning and it is carbon negative. Now, look at the way the scientists have started coming forward. They want us to start adapting this method by a technique called as pyrolysis in which you are going to heat it at a very high temperature in the absence of oxygen which leaves back a carbon called as biochar. Now biochar is carbon negative which means to say that it does not affect in resulting of greenhouse gases, it does not affect in resulting of all those black carbon waste and it is proven to be a carbon negative factor altogether. So this is very very important for each one of us to understand at this junction. Moving forward, the impact of climate change. Now, I'm going to talk about the impact of climate change on the human health as far as possible. Now, you can look at the impact of climate change starting from injuries to fatalities, asthma, cardiovascular disease. We are known to malaria, dengue and all those kind of fevers. Then we're going to talk about the respiratory systems that are coming up, the cholera and all kinds of diseases forced migration and civil conflict. This is one area which I really like to talk about. Why? Because with the climate change coming into picture, people would like to move into greener areas, but already those countries have their own population. They cannot afford taking people from outside areas. So that is also going to create some sort of conflict here. There's a lot of anxiety, despair, depression, post-traumatic stress which is going to come into picture, the malnutrition, diarrhea, harmful angel problems that are coming in, heat, stress and cardiovascular failure which is also coming up. Now if you look into this, all these factors though might not be visible to us on a daily basis, though might not be directly affecting us, but it is affecting those millions and millions of people who are living in the different corners of the world. So somewhere down the lane, a single chain in the climatic factor can cause a rippling effect across the mankind. So this is where we need to change and we need to start developing better in terms of growth, in terms of development. Now, moving forward, the weather control that we are talking about. The Russian American scientists have in past tried to control the weather, for example, by seeding clouds with chemicals and trying to produce rain when and where it is needed. Now, we call this as the cloud seeding methodology altogether. We have adopted it even in India, where China has implemented, India has also implemented cloud seeding, and we have used the remote sensing technologies so that whenever, wherever rainfall is shortage, what we try to do is implement those seeds into the cloud and we ask the clouds to literally go on a cloud burst kind of thing and it starts pouring down as rainfall. A new method is also being developed which involves replicating urban heat island effect where the cities are slightly hotter than the countryside because they are darker and they absorb more heat. This creates 28% more rain than 20 to 40 miles downwind from the cities compared to that of the upwind. So we are coming up with technologies, we are coming up with better innovative methods that is actually helping us in terms of a methodology in terms of a idea that could probably transform the way we are living. Now, just like the cloud seeding methodology, we are also coming up with alternative models of city, alternative models of uh, living zones altogether, where you can see that the heat is being absorbed, the situation is being mentored in such a manner so that you can probably control the climatic conditions altogether. Now, moving forward, with this, we come to the conclusion of the session. I hope and believe that the session was highly interesting, useful and informative. In the next sessions, we will be talking about the adaptive technologies. 
we would be talking about the 4C knowledge that we need to manage and mitigate disaster management. Until then, stay tuned, stay blessed and stay enlightened forever. Thank you once again for joining me on this wonderful session.